Hello students, I'm Colonel Failure and this is a tutorial on how to make custom maps for train fever. The aim of this tutorial is to give you the overview of how to put a map together and you should have something up and running relatively quickly. It's not a difficult process. You will get it wrong along the way, but that's fine. Hmm. To put your custom map together, you're going to need a decent image editor, and that primarily means Photoshop. If, however, you do not have the resources or the wherewithal to acquire a copy of Photoshop, I suggest using GIMP, uh, a link to which is provided uh, on screen now. Uh, GIMP has all the functionality of Photoshop and is entirely free. Um, it's maybe not quite as user-friendly, but it will get the job done. Microsoft Paint, on the other hand, is probably going to leave you cold because the type of image you need to be able to make is a grayscale PNG. Maybe Paint will sort you out. I don't know. I'm no expert in Paint. The other thing you're going to need in order to get this done is Google Images. I'm not going to teach you how to come up with a creative idea and gradually, lovingly craft it up from the ground using delicate brush strokes in order to create your masterpiece. No, what I'm going to teach you to do is rip an image off from Google Images and turn it into a map in Train Fever. Right then, first thing to decide is what size map you want to make. Like the game itself, there are three options open to you. Small, medium or large. Now, the image sizes for those are 2049 squared, so 2049 by 2049 pixels for a small map. 3073 by 3073 for a medium, or 4097 by 4097 for a large. Now, because I play on large maps by default, I've gone with a large one for this example, but this will work just as well on any other size. It's simply a case of resizing your image. At this stage, I think it's only fair to highlight that what this isn't is a basic Photoshop use tutorial. I'm going to assume that you know how to create a new image. I'm going to assume that you know how to copy something from Google Images and paste it into Photoshop. If you do get stuck, however, and you do have what feels like a very simple question to ask, please do stick it in the comments. I'm more than happy to help. With your image size plumbed in when you're creating your new map, the next thing you'll need to do is make sure that you are set to grayscale and the image type will be a PNG. Now, PNG we can set at the point of saving, but the grayscale element really is important. If you get it wrong, your map won't work. Don't worry, you won't blow your computer up in the process or wreck your installation of Train Fever and destroy your thousand hour save game, but uh, your map simply won't work. So make sure that you set it to grayscale when setting up your image. Merely painting in an RGB image and then uh, not using any colors, that's not gonna get it done. It has to be saved as a grayscale PNG. With your canvas in place, the next thing to do is to go select the image you want to work from. Now, I've started with this very, very, very simple smiley face, uh, just to give you a reasonably good idea of how straightforward this is. So I'm not gonna do anything more to it than this. Basically, I've created a circle and I've put two holes in it. The only thing you really need to bear in mind is that the darker the shade of, uh, of grey that you're using, or black in this case, the lower down it will be. So black will be underwater, whereas white will be the top of the highest mountain. Now I've gone with a, a black and grey approach for this smiley face, and we'll see that in the game now. There we go, one custom map done. And here ends the tutorial. I kid, I jest. We're going to go on to slightly more advanced things, but you can see how simple it is. Simply by putting a, a circle on top of the background, we've created a map. So as much as this map is playable, uh, it's terribly flat, and this, it has this sheer cliff running around the outside. Now, I at one point had an idea of maybe I could create some kind of science fiction based map with a new texture and, uh, and a hexagon based islands that you create different towns in between. And I may do that at some point, but for now, this is what we've got. And the edges of the landscape, as you can see between the edge of the land and the sea, are, well, the cliff face is a little bit vertical, isn't it? And that's because we need a gradient 
of grey in between the highest points and the lowest points in order for it to look anywhere near realistic. So I'm going to go back into Photoshop now and work on it some more. So sticking with the smiley face that I've got going on right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a Gaussian or Gaussian, depending on your preference, blur to it. What this does is it really fuzzies up the edges. Technical language, I think you'll agree. But what? But by adjusting the pixel radius, what you're, what you're able to do is create gradients from those hard edges. Now, the wider you choose to make that uh, pixel radius, the smoother it will become and the more shallow the gradient. Now, this in itself is not going to make for a great map, but if I just put on a very simple blur now, we can see the effect immediately. In order to mix and match this up, what you can also then do is take a harder edge to areas where you want a harder edge by just erasing the grayscale that you've got going on in there uh, and leaving those blunt edges to actually leave some cliffs in place. It can be quite a nice effect, but you're going to want some trial and error. Equally, if you use the blur tool that comes with Photoshop or GIMP, uh, you can manually adjust the, uh, the way that the gradient builds up. And as such, you can make uh, smoother slopes, you can make shallower beaches, you can, well, you can make whatever you like. In this case, what I've done is I've just drawn a mouth and I've smoothed it out and we've taken some of it down so that we filled it with water. It all looks pretty good. In fact, this is starting to become a map that is, is increasingly playable and increasingly realistic. As much as you or I may enjoy playing on a smiley face map, it's not really going to cut it. Instead, you're probably going to want to model either the town that you are familiar with that you want to create the rail network for, or an interesting landmass that, frankly, you just want to muck about with. Now, I've tried various different mountain ranges and towns and cities and so on, and the most effective method that I've found so far, or the, rather the most effective source material I've found so far, is to use something that has uh, not too much difference between uh, the top of the, uh, the world and the bottom. So a mountain range like the Pyrenees, for example, I had a go at that and it didn't come out brilliantly. The, the game does not render mountains particularly well, and since you don't have control over the texture, or rather the, the height texture of the map, you can't dictate whether it's a snow-capped peak or whether it's covered in trees all over. So give it a try by all means, but you may end up with something that doesn't quite resemble what you wanted. In order to find a suitable image to make a usable map from, you can look no further than Google Images. Basically search for a flat map of whatever you like. Uh, a grayscale map is a good place to start. Equally, black and white is a great way to go. If the map has borders drawn in and so forth, you're going to want to simplify that map before you get started so that you do have two flat colors. Maybe more if it's got mountain ranges pre-arranged in there, but you'll figure that out as you go. Uh, in fact, it can be quite interesting to work with borders in place, but it will look a little odd when you create it and run it in Train Fever. In this example, what I've done is I've taken a basic grayscale map of the city of Venice. I've then darkened it ever so slightly in order to make the landmass not that much higher up than the sea. Now, this is a, a preferential point on, uh, on my part because I don't like the, uh, the huge rolling hills that we've seen in uh, the, the smiley face, for example. What I want to do is I want to keep this relatively flat in this first instance. Now, as I've shown with the smiley previously, what I've also then done is I have blurred the edges using Gaussian blur. I've also then smoothed it out a little bit more using the blur tool. And I've defined a bit more edge where necessary. I've merged some of the canals together in order to just make the map work. Now, this is important because you have to have enough flat land for the game to be able to render out industries, towns, and the connections between the two. If you do not have enough flat land, the game will not render your map. And when trying to load it, it will tell you just that. The simple thing to do here is just make sure that you've got lots of flat open space for the game to build, and then gradually remove the flat open space until such a time as you're right on the border between it can and can't render a map out. Here we go. After a little bit of messing around and quite a lot of trial and error, I've got a Venice map that actually works. 
As you can see, it's not a perfect representation of the city. Some of the canals have been lost through excessive blurring and the water has been evaporated as we've brought the level of the sea up. But that's fine, it still creates quite a compelling map. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to add some height where previously there wasn't. Yes, I'm going to add mountains to Venice. Adding areas of greater height really couldn't be much easier than this. The way I recommend you do it is firstly create a new layer. And then on that new layer, using the paintbrush, we're just going to add some lighter colour. Or lighter shade of grey, I should say. Be careful about using white. Uh, white will take it to the absolute maximum height possible. And train fever doesn't render mountains that well. So you're going to want to decrease it so that it's, it's more grey than it is white. Once you've got these brush strokes in place, you're going to want to then apply the same level of Gaussian blurring that you have done previously. Now, you will want to experiment with this. Obviously, if you're building cliff faces or mountains, sharper edges are going to be welcome, in which case the eraser can be used to create just that kind of effect. Let's have a look and see how this looks in the game. So this first hill has come out reasonably well. One thing that actually you will notice immediately is that there are contour lines everywhere. Now this has come about as a result of me setting up this image to be 8-bit. The good news is that I can convert to 16-bit at any time I like and that will improve the definition of uh, my Gaussian blur. If you start out in 16-bit in you'll get far greater range of greys and as a result you'll get smoother curves. I used 8-bit in this case in order to show off just how the the gradation actually works but this second little ridge that we've built here if i spin the camera back around uh it's actually pretty effective and you know it's it's got a quite a sharp edge on one side but it is generally looking like part of the landscape a bit weird maybe but it works obviously i've been saving my work as i've been going along but i haven't actually showed you the saving process yet so this is the point that really makes a difference. I'm going to sail, save this properly as a grayscale PNG. As mentioned before, if I get this wrong, it won't work. I won't be able to use the map. Train Fever will unceremoniously tell me that I've got it wrong. With the map correctly saved, the next thing you're going to want to do is create the info file. Now the info file is what allows you to actually build the thing in the game. It what allows the game to recognize that you have a custom map. I suggest you use an existing info file as a template in order to make life easy for you. As you can see, it's not the most complicated file in the world. In order to edit the info file, you're going to want to use a plain text editor. Word is not going to do a good job, as when saving a file in Word, it also adds all of the font data that you're using and a lot of other markups that will make it just basically not function. I recommend using Notepad, which as a Windows user you should have easy access to. Uh, simply search your computer for Notepad and it'll probably show up. If however you can't find it, uh, a program like Notepad++, which is searchable on Google and is completely free, will also do the job nicely. By far and away the easiest way to pull a new info file together is to take somebody else's and edit it for your own purposes, then overwriting it when you're done. First things first, you're going to want to give your map a name. In the range field, you're going to dictate the range of colour from the darkest to the lightest. 85.0 to 550.0 I found to be pretty effective. Play around with it and see what you get, but by and large, the first number should be smaller than the last. I've not actually tried it the other way around. Maybe it will break everything. Next is your description, which I keep in there in a fairly shortened fashion, largely for my own purposes so I can see what's going on. But it allows things like the Train Fever Mod Manager to give you a description of that map. Likewise, tags. They're not necessary, but it's worth putting in there anyway. Remember that every tag you use has to be enclosed with speech marks. With your info file and your map itself both created, you're going to want to create a folder to stick them in. Basically, give the folder the same name as the name you used in the info file. Into this folder, you should then place both the info file and your PNG map. Then you want to put the entire folder into the maps folder of your train fever installation. Now, depending on where you got 
train fever from, this may vary. However, most people, I'm pretty certain, will have got it off of Steam. So find your Steam directory, which if you installed it in the original default position will be on your C drive. And then you're looking for Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Train Fever, Maps. Copy your map folder into the Maps folder. You're now ready to give your map a spin. Now, assuming you've got both the info file and more importantly, the image itself correct, you should be able to load it up straight away. From within Train Fever, go and create a new game. Now, you might expect the map to show up under the Advanced tab. I can assure you, it does not. Map shows up under the Basic tab when creating a new game. Simply select your map from the drop-down list, and providing all is well, it will load it up. Saving as the wrong kind of PNG is by far the most common error that I've found so far. However, other issues you might have are if you haven't got enough space for towns to be built. And this is quite important. Every town needs a bit of flat land. And if you don't have any flat land on your map, you won't have any towns. So make sure you've got some space for towns to actually emerge. And there you have it. That's how you create a custom map in Train Fever. Hopefully this has been useful. If you have any trouble, leave a comment and I'll do my best to give you a hand. However, I'm hoping that you're now going to go and create your own masterpiece. I've uploaded this Venice map just by way of example to trainfever.net or as I believe it's known these days, transportfever.net. You can download it for yourself and feel free to rip apart my files, play the map or do whatever you like with it. The info file itself should be useful to you in order to edit it to get your own map up and running. Thanks for watching today. I've been Colonel Failure. Leave us a comment and let me know how you got on. Did you find this useful? Was it enlightening but you plan on doing nothing with it at all? Or was it just completely useless? Chuck us a like, subscribe if you've not done so already, and I'll catch up with you very soon. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.